Hello everyone, we are back and this time around we're in season two of the StarCast TV Star League season one just wrapped up. So you know that Snow has won. We finally got through that. Congratulations to Snow. He's finally done it, actually manages to get a tournament under his belt. And now we're in season two and now we're gonna be thinking, can he do it again? Can he repeat? Well, we'll find out because he is part of season two. But today is going to be group A. As you can see, our group is going to be Rush, Mighty, Beast, and Bishop. And right from the get-go, I've got my eyes set on seeing a Rush versus Beast rematch. You know, in season one, this was our third and fourth place match, I think, or... No, not our third and fourth place match, but they played in the semifinals where it was a 4-2 to two score for Rush. Uh, Beast really brought it in that series, though, so if you are interested in those games, I highly suggest it. It was very, very close. We're going to get into our bracket and see who our actual players are for the entire tournament. Oh, well, I guess we're going to look at today's match first. So our first matchup is Rush versus Mighty, and then Beast versus Bishop. Admittedly, although I know who Mighty is, I know he's a strong Protoss, not familiar with his game. Don't really see many games from him. And then Bishop, same thing. I know he's a Terran player. He played random for a little bit of time, but now, as far as I understand, he's fully committed to Terran. We saw him in ASL a couple seasons ago where he Marine medic to shuttle on 76. So this guy definitely has a lot of cheese builds. And then everybody knows Rush. Obviously amazing Terran player, consistently going deep in the ASL. Went deep last season in the StarCast TV Star League. And then, of course, I think Beast. People know Beast, but we're not aware of how good he actually is. He really put on a show last season. Maybe he can repeat and go as far as he did last time. And let's take a look at our round of 32 bracket. And we do have Group A today. Group B, Dark Motive Shine Cop. So we've got Cop coming back. And then we've got Motive actually uh, making an appearance. I don't remember him in StarCast Season 1. And we've got Hero, Paralyzed, Sock, and Hyun in Group C. We've got Group D, Snow, The Champ, Tengu, Sins, and Miso. I think Tengu got another incredibly hard group there, just like he did in ASL. Action, Tyson, YSC, and Hyuk. Royal, Saber, Ruin, Scan. Oh, okay, Scan, he's back. And then in Group G, we've got Best, Jitter, Ample, and Yoon. You guys remember Jitter or Jiter? Not sure exactly how to pronounce it. Played in StarCast Season 1. He played surprisingly well, despite not really knowing who he was. He did pretty decent. And in Group H, we've got Mini, 815, Mong, and Noob. So, seems like this is a pretty stellar group. Or stellar groups, I mean. It's going to be really tough to go the distance in this tournament. Of course, there are a few names missing just immediately that I noticed, like Light and Queen. But overall, this is pretty much like ASL Junior, just like it was last season. Tons of good players. So let's get into, I think, our map pick. Or actually, are we just starting the game? In the game, so our first map is going to be retro into game one. Okay, in the bottom left, we have our steel Aaron, it is crushed, and in the bottom right, we have our red put off. Thing. I haven't really watched a bunch of I don't feel like I see him coming on Team Liquid, at least I don't remember seeing his name on the claim list. So, don't really have any insight on to how he actually plays. You know, even though I don't watch him, for example, I at least know Sin plays aggressively out of his mind. But with Mighty, I have absolutely no clue if we may just see, you know, standard macro or, you know, Sins-esque type of play. So we do have just Pylon in the main. Not going to be 
an aggro forward gate opener. Meanwhile, Rush. Of course, Depot, as expected, right by the command center. I guess we're really just waiting to see whether it will be gasless or if it will be 11 or 12 gas from Rush. As I've mentioned in previous casts, Rush does do gasless a decent amount of time. Retro is a map that, you know, you can get a good SimCity at your ramp. You can also connect your racks plus depot to the command center on the low ground, but instead, he is just going to build his racks right directly next to his command center. And that means that this is obviously going to be some type of gas opener. And that was a 12 gas. Okay, so it is just typical opener from him. Meanwhile, Mighty not doing anything unusual. At least I don't see anything unusual. No scout from either side. Okay, as I say that, of course, Karen got their scout going out. 13 scout, very typical. Now, what direction will he go? The answer is going to be vertical. Okay, so not going to find Mighty first. Maybe we'll catch him with an end scout. But so far, this is a good situation for Mighty. We have Pylon coming down. Again, nothing unusual. No Zealot at all. So it's not going to be any pressure. It looks like this is most likely going to be Goon Expand. Or maybe... If he's really ballsy, ballsy, go for like immediate citadel. We got the probe coming out. It will find Rush first. And Rush, I did just see, he put down his factory. And meta these, whoa, whoa, okay. Okay, there's the Marine. I'm sitting here like, where's your Marine, man? <laughs> You're being a little greedy. Terran players consistently build two or three Marines plus their Vulture. Oh, is he gonna lose his, okay, that was close. I thought he was going to lose his probe there, but we'll manage to save it, and it is an end scout. So Rush will find Mighty first, or no, sorry, we'll find him second. And it is going to be a rangeless expand from Mighty. I think he does have the goon coming. So everything here looks pretty normal these days. This is a very common build. However, Karen does have opportunity because he did not cut Marines to go for some type of marine pressure plus vulture plus scb pull but without any vision to drill on it onto i don't think he's going to actually go for that instead he's just ex gonna expand try and match the nexus timing it's only slightly delayed in comparison there's the goon because he saw how fast the nexus was able to be skip that bunker at least for now now there's the vulture okay it will get shown and now Mighty knows that, hey, there's a Vulture out in the map. I need to be worried. I need to keep my Dragoon in position on that ramp to make sure it doesn't get in. And there is the second Goon. Bunker coming down. Everything just very, very standard from Rush. You know, last season I was hoping to see his one fact starport. And I don't think we saw that almost in any of the games. If we did see it, it was rare. It was maybe one in total. So hopefully... We can get the patented starport follow-up, but right now, I only see one factory. I don't see any tech follow-up from him. No armory, no second factory. What's that SCB doing? Okay, that was... I don't actually think that's a depot. Yeah, that's an armory. Okay, so not going to be the starport follow-up that I was hoping for. Will instead just be the mega fast upgrades. It's crazy how... <laughs> how the upgrades are changing just over the years. It used to be we're getting the six minute armory. Now we get the 530 armory. Now we're getting like a 515, five minutes. Now all of a sudden, I think last season we saw it consistently around 44, 45. Now Rush pulling it out at 430. At what, at what point will the Terran players be like, you know what, I'm just gonna go factory armory even before command center. Well, this is an interesting move. He tries to set up some mines, does not get any of them down. That was really good focus fire, by the way, from Mighty to take down all of the mines before any of them could actually be placed. And he kills the Vulture, so really good defense from him. And if I was him, I would just go instantly build a Nexus. And I think that may be what he's actually doing. I think that's a pro. <coughs> Probe only up over on the right side. Yep, it is. So Mighty's going to take advantage of that. He knows that Terran 
must have went for just one factory as a follow up, as a, as an opener, in order to build that amount of units. And he's going to respond by saying, "Hey, well, you lost your vulture, you lost your mines, you can't do anything to me. You don't have any units. I'm just going to build another nexus." Now, we did see the robo in the main of Mighty. I think I saw Observatory, but we could have Reaver coming pretty soon. Nope, I don't see a support page just yet. So it looks like Mighty may be skipping Reaver this game. It's a bit uncommon to skip Reaver in general, even if you don't go for like the 637 minute drop. A lot of players, at least in my experience, they'll still get the Reaver to delay pushes or they'll go for like a delayed nine minute drop. You know, something along the um, along those lines to still try and get some SCV kills. But right now, really doesn't look like he's doing anything like that. This could be just Gateway Man into Templars, maybe? Okay, there's a support bait. Yeah, I was like, man, nobody ever plays without Reaver these days. But there is a support bait, instant speed. And that means that it will be the delayed Reaver that I was talking about. Vulture pokes in, tries to get a probe kill. I think he got one. Meanwhile, at the front of the base, Mighty is poking himself. And Karen will be pushed, or Karen will push this back with his tanks in siege mode. No, just one vulture sharking around. Really gonna, oh, oh, is there actually an opening there? He just let him walk in. Vulture's gonna get in here. There's one probe. Ooh. Okay, good defense. That could have been way worse. Thought he was going to rack up like three or four probe kills, but he ends up only getting one. Now something to point out, at the natural of Protoss, there is no gas. Absolutely no gas. So this is going to be full-on gateway, man. Probably not even with Storm, at least not initially. This is just going to be a mega, a mega bust, I'm imagining. And... I will say, this is actually kind of an easy style to beat, like there's no real way of sugarcoating it, as long as you scan it. If you scan it and you know you're getting hit with a massive bust, very easy to stop. You just sit in your base, you let your upgrades kick in, you let your critical mass kick in, you know, sitting on like 150, 170 max supply. But if you get greedy and you step out, thinking like, oh, this guy's only on four gateways or something, or he's teching, and you actually are running into a 10 gate, you could be in trouble. So, Rush needs to be very diligent with his scans, needs to actually figure out what's going on, and so far what I'm seeing right here, six fact, this could be for a timing, but it could also just be, he may have scanned and saw so many gateways, saw that there was no nat gas, and he just wants to be cautious before taking his third base. I love the Reaver at the third, denying the Vulture move out. That means that there's absolutely no possibility for Rush to get any harassment done. And again, Mighty is going to take this opportunity to take another base. Get top right up and running. His nat that natural coming down pretty soon. Got a second Reaver popping out. Up to seven gates right now. Also see the Forge. So plus one should be done by the time... Karen moves out, scan went off, saw that there is not that many goons, but it is a 40 supply lead right now for Mighty, however, Karen's army is very, very strong right now. It is, what, eight tanks or so, plus one is definitely done. I think in the main of Rush, I did see a starport, but I don't remember a science facility being placed anywhere. So I'm not sure if this is a 1-1 timing or if this is a 2-1 timing. You may, you may be thinking that it's a 1-1 one, one timing because of how many factories there are. But like I said, this may not actually be a push. This could just be a, uh, you know, try and get base to get a third base. Now, Vultures run into the third base right now. Rack up, uh, I would say, was it like three probes? Something like that? Well, actually, okay, this is a full-on command. Six-fact timing here. I'm surprised that he's gotten as far as he did. How does Protoss not have speed? Did he never get an observer in to actually spot the factory? I'm, I'm looking at his vision now. It doesn't seem like he actually saw this coming. A shuttle coming, and it may actually just get taken out by the turret. Where's the Reaver? Where's the Reaver? He's to unload. Okay, Reaver drop in the main. Not much defense here, just a couple vultures. This could get ugly. Karen's got all of their units out of position. 
there are no vultures supporting those tanks on the on the at the push. So Pronos, I, I think now is the time to try and capitalize on that. But you gotta remember, okay, there we go, Zealot Bomb, that's great. If you don't have speed on your Zealots, you gotta be careful. Oh, those are very isolated tanks. That's that's Okay, good splash. Speed kicked in. I think now's the time to go. Even though his army is not that big, cannot let these six tanks escape. The Reaver ends up falling. That's a big loss. But look at the worker count. 38 to 62. Massive eco lead for Protoss right now. And he's jumping on top of this army. This is exactly what you need to do as Mighty. Kill these tanks. Make sure that Terran cannot stabilize. You do not want any of these tanks to survive. And this timing that Rush ended up going for... It has not worked at all, and Mighty is in the mid game in a really, really good spot. And again, like I said, I don't remember seeing a science facility being built. D during that entire Reaver drop, I still didn't see one. So Terran may just be stuck on 1 1 upgrades. Vultures setting up some mines to deny. Yeah, it is 1 1 upgrades. Trying to deny uh, passageway of these units to the third base. Now, this could rack up some damage. Probes are trying to escape the focus fire. Is really good from the vultures though. Already taking down five probes, six, seven, eight. Eight or so probe kills right there. Really good damage. But that's still not enough. Rush is still way far down in this game. More vultures being sent across the map. He's trying to make magic happen with his harassment, but all Mighty has to do is just. You know, put goons in key positions, hold position on the ramp, hold position in the center of the map, make sure that he doesn't get his bases hit, and he's looking good. I am, I am still worried that Protoss is low on tech, but with a 40 supply lead, you feel like this should be Protoss's game. Now that is a probe transfer, okay, luckily the goons are going to push these probes back, and he will hit a couple of them. But not that many. But maybe get like three probes there. And get another decent pickoff, but not a lot of damage. Now all this is really doing for us is buying him time because he knows the real threat in any pushing army is the tanks. Right now his tank count is decent at 10, but it's not an absurd amount, right? He needs to buy time, so that's what the vultures are trying to accomplish. But he did bleed off a decent amount of vultures, and now Mighty may be thinking that he can actually go for a game-ending move. If he had double shuttle and double shuttle zealot bomb, maybe he could bomb those tanks and maybe actually clean it up. And there's the double shuttle that I was talking about. So we'll see if Mighty wants to go for that, but it is very hard to feel confident making a move like that versus an entrenched Terran army. However, Protoss is approaching Max. You know Terran was on two bases for a long time. If you're Max and you know Terran's on two base, how far up in supply can they actually be? I really do think this could be a, a good opportunity for Protoss, but instead he is going to back off. A second Robotics is coming in, so this is going to be full-on Robo-Man. He's going to try and just be non-stop harassing the main. Another drop coming into the main right now. Goliath in there, though. Good mine connection. But the Reaver still unload. He's going to take down some more SCVs. Well, he's going to take down a lot of SCVs. He didn't evacuate any of them. The Vultures are going to get instantly blown up. One Reaver falls. Oh, at the same time, he's in the front. So it was a diversion. Try and draw the units out of position. Oh, the Templars I didn't even know he had Storm. There he goes. Storming a lot of the tanks. But this is such a killer choke point for Terran that Proto still, despite being up, what was it, 40 or 50 supply, cannot push through. I feel like we've seen a lot of games where not just Protoss players try and just ram their way through choke points like this. I've seen Terrans try and bust Zergs. I've seen Protoss try and bust Zergs. And when Terran is set up like this with the Mass Concave or Zerg is set up with Mass Lurker Concave, it's just impossible to get through. So Rush ends up holding. It's not like Mighty was all in with that attack though. He's got five bases now. So he'll just transition into further into the late game. His comp though is almost pure zealot at this point. I think he does need to get a few more goons. But other than that, he's looking pretty stellar. He's kept Terran's work account very low. It's just 41. 
Okay, he finds an opening here. There should be Storm. Oh, doesn't get off any Storms. Good focus fire from Rush right there. These are the types of trades he needs, but he's still down 60 supply. I would really like to see Proto start taking top left. And the reason I say that is even though he doesn't need top left, clearly the way that Terran wins this game is that Terran tries and splits the map. So if you can take top left, even if you just mine it out partially, like 25% of the minerals, that's 25% that Terran's never going to get, right? You mine an additional 25%, he mines a 25% less, that's a 50% difference right there. So I do hope Protoss does take that expansion, but instead, he's not over expanding. He's gonna continue trying to shuttle bomb this position. He is up again, 50 supply, but where do you attack? Everything is just so locked down. How do these shuttles get in? I did see the vultures did move out of position. There actually is not that many Goliaths here, not that many turrets, but there are a decent amount of mines. Everything gets exploded. A single storm goes off. He killed like 10 workers with that. Really good damage. Goons and Zealots are gonna try and bulldoze their way through. They do get in technically, but a big loss for Mighty. But killing those 10 SCVs, that's also a massive loss for Terran. And Terran's about to be on one base mining. His natural should be mining out pretty soon. Main is basically gone. So Terran's really on one base. I, I, I don't think he can actually expand to top left anymore. He's lost too much eco. I don't think he can split himself that thin. I think now at this point... If Rush is going to try and continue this game, maybe prioritize trying to expand to bottom middle and then try and get the center. I think he's taking too much damage. He can never hit max anymore, at least not for a few minutes. So Mighty's done a really good job to just keep Rush on the back foot the entire game. Also, I'm just now noticing Terran's upgrade still at 1-1. So this game, Rush was never really able to hit his power spike and you just feel like it, it must be a matter of time until Terran's gonna be out of this game. I, I, I guess he's gonna have like maybe one or two major attacks and then he's just gonna be out of steam because he won't be able to replace it uh, as quick as you're expecting most Terran players to be able to. Did see plus two weapon kicking in for Terran so there is the power spike. And Mighty has something like 12 gates in his main. I see a big round of buildings being built at top right. I'm going to guess that's maybe five to six gateways. So we're looking at close to 20 gate production, you know, somewhere in that ballpark. Really big time macro from Mighty. It's not that Rush is missing macro, but he's on seven factories. Oh, I thought that he was actually going to catch these tanks out of siege. But Rush did see it coming. Here we go. It's going to be another incoming attack. Nope. Feels like that that's not going to work. And he will back off. I think that's a smart move. This army looks, at least from what I'm seeing, looks tiny. Does not seem like this is his full army. What is this? One group of goons, maybe one and a half groups of zealots, and then a couple of shuttles. Not sure exactly where the remaining supply is of Mighty, but it does look quite small. Now, Terran is at 160 supply. It can get really rough for Protoss if they have a bad engagement. 170 can do a lot of damage, and if you factor in the worker differential of 30, this is basically a max Terran army, so Mighty needs to respect this. Does not need to be overly confident here. He's trying to wait for Terran to be out of position, but Rush is being slow but surely uh, unseizing and seizing his tanks. And now he's actually gotten to the center of the map. If he can, if he can hold this attack and immediately expand behind this, he'll be on two bases. Mighty sharking around, waiting for the angle, but I don't think he has observers anymore. You don't want to be attacking into a maxed army with no observers with mines set up. So that's why he's hesitant to attack. Is it finally time? Nope, not time yet. I do not, okay. These Templars are gonna get caught. Goodbye. I don't, is that a command? Okay, Rush is actually floating his command center to the center of the map. So he's taken his main command center, 
that's no longer going to be mining. And instead, it's going to float it directly to the center and try and expand there. I think this was a smart move. I think this was the, basically the safest base other than bottom middle. And he's going to continue to push. That is so many tanks. This is such a huge army. This is like StarCraft 2 where you're calling down mules because you don't have uh, SCVs to actually mine. Like, look at this. Can, can Protoss fight this? Well, you do have to be careful to not move too far because if if Rush pushes too far, he's going to lose his center base. He's, he's shadowing this army, though. He saw the army sneaking to the left side. He instantly sieges up. D-Matrix on the tank. Where are the shuttles? They're over off in no man's land. Dude, this army is huge. My, there's no observers also. So any move that Protoss makes, he's got to be worried that he's just going to bleed off units for free into the mines. So Rush, he's he's bought enough time. He's got his upgrades. He's got a huge army. He's at max. I can't even believe he got to max. Now look, uh, we don't see it in the we don't see it on our, our on our screen right now. But between the natural and the third base, there are a lot of units on Rush's side of the map bugging out. So he needs to kill those depots or fix that or something so that they don't bug, bug out. Look at this mines in the center. These zealots are dead. There's nothing to support them. So there goes like 12 zealots basically for free. And remember, Protoss, it, it's only gateways. I don't remember seeing a Stargate anywhere. Okay, there's a Stargate. I was, uh, thankfully, he is going carriers. I was like, there's no way that he can actually win with gateways now. There's an attack at mid left, but I think Terran has a huge army over there. And Rush, he's actually pushing to kill top right. Those buildings at top right? Oh my gosh, he lost all the workers at mid left. 15 or 16 SCVs just died right there. And meanwhile, top right is getting blown up. Terran did lose a ton of supply somehow. He went from max down to 130. Not sure exactly how that happened, but now supplies have really been crippled for Terran, but he still does have the middle base up and running. The problem for him is 24 workers. I mean, that's just, that's just nothing. Now Rush at the same time, I think has split off two tanks to top middle. I can hear the shots from that position. So I'm assuming that that Nexus is close to being dead. But he has killed the natural of top right, slowly creeping into this. Now, actually, I think this is a mistake. I think he's way too far forward here. I think he's just going to get collapsed on, and this may just end the game. This is There's no support for these eight tanks. There's no support for the tanks in the middle. I think he needed to take his win there, kill, uh, having killed the natural and potentially killing top middle. Yeah, there are the tanks and back off. But instead, looks like this was his last hurrah. And unfortunately for him, this comp, or well, his comp is good. The size of his army is just not big enough. All these tanks get cleaned up. He has no money anymore. He's got, what is it, 10 Goliath, four tanks. And Protoss is still basically maxed out. Protoss still has top left also, and he still has top right, so he still has two base mining, decent econ, and there's just no army anymore for Terran. He's still going to continue to play it out. I see another drop at mid left. Yeah, another storm. Just relentless with the storm. Down to 17 workers. But you got to give props to Rush. He made it a game. Like, I can't believe he actually got to the center with... A maxed army i guess the game technically isn't over just yet but being down 85 supply you gotta feel like this army shouldn't be uh okay that is that is a lot of protoss okay i i was thinking like really protoss gonna do it but now seeing the real army coming through the backside, this is going to be the gg there it is Rush, he taps out, and that was a really good game from Mighty there. Kept Rush on the back foot, held the push perfectly, and after that, just great. I guess really the only dangerous moment was the maxed army in the center of the map. I still think if he killed the Nat and killed top middle and then just retreated back to the center, maybe he could have staged a comeback, hold the center, while just allowing Protoss to mine on two bases while you're also on two bases. You know, that's a situation that Terran could actually 
win. But in the end, Mighty gets the victory. And we are going to be going into our second game of the day, which is going to be Beast versus Bishop. I think last season, in season one, people would not have been excited about uh, this particular matchup. But after the performance that Beast put on in season one, this all of a sudden is a, a very exciting game. We've got Beast in the top right. And in the bottom right, we have the Bishop. And like I was saying, Bishop knocked out Shuttle in ASL, was it last season or the season before, with a Marine Medic push on 76. Yes, a Marine Medic push versus Protoss, one base. So you've got a player that's willing to play extremely risky, going up against a Zerg player who we already know is willing to play extremely risky. You know, he likes to go for that ling all in while transferring drones to the natural to make it look like he's actually powering so we'll see if beast is going to continue that type of play or if, if he's got something different planned for season two now bishop scb going out this is most likely going to be for the wall but it could be for nate racks and that is a depot okay so an interesting depot positioning there's going to be a gap obviously between the depot and the racks now meanwhile beast no early pool this game i feel like if i remember correctly in season one we didn't see that many early pool openers from beast generally it was like an 11 hatch or 12 hatch so not really anything unexpected so far racks coming down now i'm trying to remember if bishop is someone that plays wraith and for some reason, I'm thinking he does play Wraith a decent amount. And look at that. As I say that, gas coming down. And I was literally just talking about this with my friend on Discord yesterday night. I was saying, you know, with all the maps that have good walling positions, like 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 Retro, why don't we see 1-1-1 that often anymore? Like, one of the hardest parts about playing 1-1-1 is you have so few units. You've got a micro, the vulture... And the Marines versus the, you know, millions of lings that Zerg builds. But if you've got semi-walls or full walls, all of a sudden you take that out uh, of play of Zerg. And you can go into stuff like 1-1-1. And it looks like we may actually have a 1-1-1 here. Or we could have two port Wraith in the main of Bishop. He's continuing to mine a lot of gas. So this is going to be most likely two port Wraith. I guess it could technically be a one base two fact mech play but that's just so unusual that i don't think that that's going to be the poss uh, the the strategy of choice for bishop now bishop did get very lucky that beast doesn't have an overlord in position over the natural if beast was bottom left and saw that there was no natural well he would already know that this guy's teching so good spawns for beast or good spawns for bishop in this game and it's going to be on Beast to try and figure out what's going on. Right now, Bishop really hasn't shown anything that signals that, hey, this is this is a one base. He's shown a couple of Marines, but the drone didn't poke in and couldn't see a command center because the racks and depot is set up so far that you can't really confirm anything. And there is the double starport of Bishop in his main just now. So Beast is going to be in trouble unless he's got a read and whatever... He thinks is going to be the best counter to two port wraith he needs to put that down right now lair is coming in so that'll be completing pretty soon but he needs a hydrogen these star ports are extremely fast there's the vulture and this is going to be the first clue that this is a tech opener uh, that beast has the entire game his he doesn't have that sunken he doesn't even have lings okay just now he's building a few more lings but this vulture is going to do a lot of damage and now Bishop is probably thinking like, uh-oh, what did I get myself into? Did I just completely misread the situation? And the answer is yes, you did. There's still no sunken. Okay, now the colony comes down, but all these lings are gonna die. There's no hydrogen just yet. He's gonna try and hold this with just fire, but the racer are already gonna be out. He's also already lost an overlord, so he's supply blocked. This is a disaster. Now that was really good. Catches a vulture, he needed that. But this is still such a really tough spot to be in. Sunken. Oh, the Vulture got in! 
I can't believe it got in more drones falling, and this may be game over. This is this is game ending damage. Supplies he's still supply blocked. He's still 18 out of 18. Does he even have an overlord coming? He just taps out. Wow, that was a fast game. Oh, holy moly. So Bishop, he just crushed through our semi-finalists from last season, and he did it in really quick fashion. It's, it's unfortunate that I think bottom right of, well, bottom right and top left of Retro, because of where Terran's put the walls, you can never confirm if there's a command center. The building is just too far away from the wall, and BC thought he was playing a macro game, but he was not. And he just gets completely picked apart. So, well done to Bishop there. That's a solid win. And <laughs> this sets us up for Mighty versus Bishop in the winner's match. And we've got a, a rematch of Rush versus Beast in the loser's match. That's crazy. So, let's get into our winner's match game. Going to be a PvP. We're going into Dark Lord. Hey, can you top left in an awfully tricky one? First, these is Bishop, and in the bottom right. He really just brought it to Rush in a macro game. It is mighty. So, Dark Origin, every Terran's favorite map. Just like every Terran's favorite map in the previous season was Eclipse. Two-player map, absolute nightmare for Terrans to deal with the all the shenanigans that Protoss ha uh, can pull out. And gas deal, proxy gate. We'll see what Mighty wants to come up with though. So far, doesn't look like he's going to do anything uh, that Terrans really hate on this map in particular. It is still going to be probably a forward gate. But the way, uh, but we have been seeing some forge expands coming back into the meta. This could be like a gas steal into a forge expand. Rodos probe is going across the map, and gas steal should be incoming pretty soon. But look at this, Bishop's already putting an SCV on the ramp. He does not want to get gas stolen, and it's not going to be forged. It is going to be a gate follow-up. So. This is a cute move from Bishop to make sure he does not lose his gas. He is losing some mining time, of course, but as long as he can still get, you know, a somewhat decent time gas, he's going to be feeling great. And that means that Protoss is no longer going to be able to just go gate Nexus. And Bishop, there we go. It's going to be like a 142-ish gas timing, and that means that Mighty's going to also have to go gas himself. So this was really good. Single SCV holding the line gets Bishop into a normal game on this map. Definitely going to be considering pulling this out on the ladder uh, later today. That probe is getting dangerously close to dying. <laughs> we need to be careful there. Now that is cybernetics, okay. So straight cybernetics. Not going to be a zealot. Not going to be any pressure despite it being a forward gate. There's the racks. And everything is just very normal. We're going to actually get a standard game on Dark Origin. SCV is going to see that, hey, this guy tried to forward gate, but where's your zealot? It wasn't actually shown, so he does need to consider that it could be out in the map. SCV confirms the cybernetics. Alright. And... Everything's just just very normal. Now remember, in the game we just saw of Rush versus Mighty, it was skipped range in the Nexus. This time around, it will be into range. And it's this is actually range, it's not a fake. You did see the 150 gas get used. And Terran, I guess, oh, oh this is a two fact? Two fact? Okay, two fact. Bishop, man. Every game I've seen of him, he's pulling out something crazy. First, the starports on Retro with the race. 
now into a two fact which in my opinion is not that strong in general versus protos but maybe he can make something happen here you know there are bridges it's going to be hard for him to get across the map but maybe he's thinking well it may be hard for me to get across the map but if i get siege all of a sudden i can just siege across the bridges i mean maybe he's thinking along those lines we'll see what type of push he wants to do whether it's going to be tank focused or vulture focused he's going to build a bunker here and try and act like he's expanding but you know in general protoss players they do run by the bunker to try and confirm what's going on but so far Mighty has no idea what this is, and it is going to be heavy tank because he's gotten the double add-on. Bishop has started cutting SCVs, just going to sit at 18. There's the loaded up bunker, and I don't think he pushed far enough to confirm a command center. What's being built right now, I think, is either an eBay or a barracks. He canceled it. I think maybe, maybe the, maybe the goon actually saw the SCV building something. And then he thought that this actually command center, but that was definitely not a command center. It was a fake. And Mighty, if he stays on one gate here, okay, he's on two gate. So already he's got a good opener. You definitely need to have two gate versus a two fact. Just needs to put down his robo now. But I don't think I saw a robo get put down. So it could get dangerous if mines get set up, which of course we know at some point they will get set up. And here we go. It's gonna be six Marines. Did those Marines get spotted? It should be three tanks, six Marines, and then rallied vultures, and here we go. Three goons gonna try and hold the line, but this is a really, really scary push. Bishop is mega all in with this. He has almost no SCVs. All Protoss has to do is hold. He may even be able to just sack his natural and be able to transition into a normal game. But he's going to try and diligently hold these uh, these bridges. Like I said, this is the hardest part about this map, is getting across the bridges. And he didn't hold the top side. That means that the tanks are going to get through. Vultures tried to get through the bottom. Wow. I is he dead? There's so many tanks. There's so many Marines. Good focus fire onto the mines. But one of them lands. More going to land. Oh, Good focus fire. But look, half the goons are already dead. Well, this was easy. Am I underrating the two-fact power? Remember, this this gate is, this is half of his production. He can just kill the gate, and then Kronos is down to one gate versus a two-fact with no Robo, no Reavers. Probes are, that, that was a really good probe block right there, by the way. Doing a lot of damage, keeping the units back, but the guys explode. Kill all of the goons, basically, except for two. And I, unless I'm missing something, unless a Reaver pops out and saves the day, Bishop, he's on the brink of taking this game. There's the Observer, but it's way too late. You have an Observer, but you have one Goon. Wow, man. I can't believe it, it was that easy. The mind just blows up and kills that Goon, and just like that, what was it, a six minute game in the Terran versus Zerg? Seven minute game in what we the game we just saw? And Bishop, he takes the game. I think this is best of three, if I remember correctly. I'm not sure exactly whether this is best of three or best of one. But if this is best of one, Bishop's already out in first place. Uh, I guess we'll find out in a second. Let's get into our next game. It's either going to be Beast versus Rush or... It's going to be game two. Looks like it is game two. Yeah, game two. Yeah, I, I remember Cruiser saying that this format was going to match the ASL round of 16. So it is going to be best of ones in the opening matches and then best of three the rest of the way. So that, so that means Mighty... It's not in the losers, not in the deciders match just yet. Bishop not out in first place just yet, but we've got Bishop in top middle, and then we've got Mighty in the bottom left corner. That is a that was a killer push. I, I think what made it stronger was the fact that he saw that it was a forward gate. I think if the gateway wasn't at the front, where Protoss could 
give up their natural and then try and just hold their main with all their production there, maybe Terran wouldn't have gone for that. I could be wrong, though. But uh, Bishop, as I was stating, he does a lot of wonky builds. Two Fact is one of the oldest styles that Terran's had. You know, I remember playing it in 2001. And in general, Protoss players are able to deal with it quite easily, but because Mighty went into a second gate so quickly and had a really slow robo, he never had the Observer, he never had the shuttle. Like, a Zealot Bomb on top of some of the mines would have been great. A Reaver would have been great, but he just didn't have the time because of how delayed it was. So I guess I'm wondering whether Bishop will try it again. Right now, we're actually having a 12 Nexus from Mighty. Mighty's saying, F that. I'm just going to get the greediest opening possible. And if you try and do a timing versus that, well, good luck. Because 12 Nexus is incredibly strong versus all timings. Especially the style where they cut probes and go double gate, double zealot, double goon. So there goes the Nexus. And in Bishop's main, I think this was again a 12 gas. It was a pretty quick gas for Apocalypse, but I still think it was a 12 gas. And right now, we're really just waiting to see whether Bishop will continue to mine a bit more than 100 gas. How many gates Mighty is going to put down? Is he going to try and do some type of gate forge opener or something along those lines? He does get lucky with the scout, though. does find Terran first. And Terran's going to see the bad news that, hey... This is a 12 Nexus, but he finds it really quickly. So if he did want to try to do something crazy, you know, he at least will be able to respond before making the decision on whether he wants to expand or not. There goes the factory. And probe is just going to be a nuisance here. Try and just be annoying on the probe or on the SCV, I mean. Marine, what is it doing, man? That SCV may actually die. Okay, it's not going to die. I was getting worried. We're like, dude, you're just standing there. You're watching your, your brother get taken out. You don't care? You gotta get in there. Help him out. Now the probe gets taken down. And actually, I think this is uh, kind of rough for Mighty because Bishop's a tricky guy. I could see him putting back onto gas. And in fact, I think that's what he has done. I think he has put three back onto gas. And this could be another two fact. There's the Forge. There's the Cybernetics. So it is going to be Gate Forge. Like I was saying, this style, for whatever reason, even I've been hitting it on the ladder a couple times. And I'm not sure exactly the reason for the Forge, but it has made a return. And by the way, this is a two-fact. That is a second factory next to his first factory. So he's going to go for a timing here. Now, I have tried this also obviously versus way worse players. And I, I've been hit or miss going for a two-fact timing. Sometimes the Protoss players, they over-tech, and you can hit them uh, before they have enough goons or before they have uh, like a, a Reaver out or DT out. And then there are other games where the Protoss player puts down what they're doing, what he's doing right now, which is like three or four gates, and you move out, and you feel like the dumbest player on earth. Because there's just so many goons, you just get immediately overrun. Now, this is a lot of Marines. So this is a committed attack, just like in game one. This is, I need to end the game with this attack, otherwise I'm dead. So there's no transition here out of it. Well, actually, now that I'm looking at it, he does have 22 SCVs. That's more than last game. Remember, last game he's just sat at 18. But this is a ton of Marines something like eight or seven or eight marines he's moving out right now just a single tank the tank is i think you're getting siege mode with this push i don't think it's with mines so he's really reliant on this tank surviving and getting through the cannon because the cannon is is the real threat like the marines can't engage into the cannon they just get instantly two-shotted so as soon as the cannon is is gone all of a sudden your army is actually pretty fearsome now look at this move for my this is this is perfect he's setting up a flank Terran doesn't know, well now Terran might know, but either way, this is a lot of stuff that's cutting off reinforcements and he can hit from two angles. The tank sieges up, oh he didn't actually see it, oh he did, he did. He's gonna kill off the marines, the zealot is gonna hold the line while the goons do all the damage. This vulture's gonna die, I think. 
Yeah, both of died. Tank is gonna die. He's so close to being taken down. Oh, it didn't actually die. One more hit. He needs that hit, but the tank at the front got killed because the, mari the Marines are were completely gone. Well. What do you do now as Bishop? His, his whole strategy down the drain. Like I said, when you do this push, you're rushing Siege. You don't have to worry about mines as Protoss because you need Siege to get through the cannon. So there's no chance of there also being mines. The four goons... Well, I guess now, by now, mines are out in the map. But my point is, is that this game is completely lopsided into Protoss's favor. Protoss should, I would say, take a Nexus at this point. No real reason to build any more units. Doesn't need to try and push into the main and try and, you know, out micro mines that are likely there. Just, just take more bases. Wait for your observer. Terran can't punish you anymore. You just completely shut down the attack like it was nothing. Surprisingly, Bishop is actually going to try and transition out of this, but this is such a rough situation. I think that what you see right there is the only thing he can really do, which is try and go starport. But remember, Protoss open with a forge. There's likely going to be a cannon in the main in the next uh, few minutes or so. So I don't really imagine this starport doing much damage uh, either. Bishop in quite a pickle. He's down eight workers. Third Nexus coming up for Protoss. I guess the one saving grace is Protoss did go three gate opener. That means the Robo is pretty far delayed. So is the Observer timing. So for now, he can just survive off of a couple tanks, a few mines. And that should allow him to at least try and scale uh, into the mid game. <coughs> doesn't have to overly build units, doesn't have to, you know, cut SCVs to afford those units because he's he's safe right now. Mighty's third Nexus. About to finish. I think actually Mighty just put down a Stargate in his main. I think to the left of the gateways, I'm pretty sure there's a Stargate. That building is pretty sizable. And generally Protoss players build all their gateways right next to each other. So I'm gonna imagine that that's a Stargate. Gas coming down for Bishop. Fourth factory coming down for Bishop also. So he is going to try and do some damage with the drop. And maybe try and transition in this into a four fact timing. I, I don't think you can really do a four fact timing. I think that this is most likely going to be four fact. Just so he can build a lot of units. And try and get his third base in. That was a Stargate. So it is going to be carriers as the follow-up for Mighty, and the cannon was about halfway done in the main. So this drop, I think, is just going to get immediately shut down. I also think there are goons in position too. So this is this is going to do nothing. Yeah, there's already goons in position. So this drop did absolutely nothing. It's going to get you know a couple of probes, like two probes, but that was not the damage that Bishop needed. It was actually more than that. It was maybe four or five. So he does trade a drop ship, three or four vultures for five probes. And again, Mighty can just do pretty much all he wants. Wow, Bishop, he's making an attack? There's no way, man. The tank count is too low. Maybe he saw with his vulture that there were stargates and he's thinking that, hey, you're going carriers. I need to attack right now while your goon count is low, but he's still down 40 supply here. There are so many goons. Also, it's an uphill battle. I hope he turns around. <laughs> I, 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 how, how are you gonna get through this army? Look at that, it's 24, like, it's like 20 goons. Versus five tanks, six tanks and eight vultures or so but he's gonna try and make it work i guess he feels like he can't play a macro game i'm i'm in agreement with that but this is basically impossible he does hit 
There's not that many zealots here to get on top of the tanks, but look at the dudes. They're just so strong. And also it's uphill, like I said, so a lot of those tank shots didn't register. He's trying to focus down the goons as best as he can, but that's it. GG comes out. And Mighty, he is going to strike back in game two. Well, that's one of the reasons you don't do that timing attack versus that particular opener, is you're very reliant on the Protoss going into fast tech. If they build a lot of gates like he did and build goons, well, you saw the result. You just don't have enough support for the tank to actually push through. And surprisingly, Protoss has so much stuff despite building a forge. So let's get into our third game here. Wait. Wait a minute. Okay. I'm right. There's a rest missing on Discord saying it was Rush versus Peace. I'm like, wait a minute, we're, we're in a tie score one to one. This can't be Rush versus Peace. I guess we can see that. I don't know if surprised that it was going to lose. But, but here we are in game three of the winner's match. Side series between Bishop and Mighty. We've got four solid balls at the top side. Now, Bishop has shown aggro play in every single game. He's gone for the two port raid, he's gone for the two fact and back to back builds. I think now, or in back to back games, now is the time where you mix in the macro cheese, as Artosis would call it. This is the time where you mix in the gasless expand or the 14cc. In game one of Mighty versus Rush, Mighty kind of had a slow scout. If there's a slow scout this time, and Mighty scouts vertically, maybe he could get away with a 14cc. Mighty right now, okay, for a second I thought he was not going to send out a probe to build that gate. I thought we were going to have back-to-back -back 12 Nexus games, but not going to be the case. Gateway coming down. And Bishop. Okay. It is just going to be another 11 or 12 gas opener from him. A bit sad to see no fast command center here. But I think sometimes when you do a lot of aggressive openers, you really do set up your opponent to overreact, and you can get away with moves like the uh, Gasless Expand or 14cc, but not going to be the case this time. Bishop, I guess, may have another all-in type of build planned. We'll see if he'll, he'll try and go for 2-pack again. I feel like that's, that's suicide at this point, but could be wrong. Maybe a one-base starport, but I don't think that's going to work either because in game one, actually, Mighty had really great placement of his Dragoons spread out throughout his base. So I don't think actually drops are going to be a great choice either. Probe is going to get lucky. Again, going for that horizontal scout just like in the game versus Rush and we'll find Bishop first. And the SCV, I guess, didn't recognize the angle that the probe was coming from. Oh, actually, he's going for a cross scout. Okay. So he wants to make sure that he's not getting hit by a proxy. Meanwhile, this time around, Mighty's mixing it up a little bit. This is going to be a Zealot pressure opener. First Zealot is almost halfway across the map. And Bishop, he is going to continuously build those Marines in anticipation of something like that. He has pulled off of gas this time. So this is going to be a normal opener. Still only two Marines. Zealot is just hanging around. Since he did not get scouted first, he's trying to act like, hey, it's just a goon opener, man. You only need three Marines. But in reality, this Zealot goon combo is extremely deadly. And it's going to be really hard for Bishop to stop this. He needs more Marines. He needs the Vulture immediately. He needs another depot for continuous Marine uh, production right now. He doesn't have that. This could be a canceled command center, by the way. This is this is an anti-timing for Bishop. Here we go. Zealot and Goon moving in here. This is this is really tough. The probe ends up even surviving here. Vulture's out though. And Vulture does do a lot of damage to shield, so that goon is not as strong 
as you would expect it to be. So far, this is a really good hold, despite having no SimCity, no bunker, no fourth marine. Bishop held that perfectly. And actually, well, he held it perfectly initially, but there's another goon here. Oh, the zealot dies. Marines are doing a lot of damage. But all that's left is the vulture. The one marine gets loaded up in the bunker, but that's, oh my gosh, one hit. One hit is all that goon needs. But I think the marine is so low that he can't actually, oh, he, I was gonna say he can't actually walk out and get the goon, but he steps out of the bunker to refocus fire that bunker. And it luckily targeted the hurt goon. It, how does that happen? He manages to escort out the probe that's on two health. That was, that was wild. But now, two goons are gonna start racking up damage on this bunker. Karen has had to build so many additional marines, but he did nail his tank timing, so he is going to push back these goons. He may end up popping that goon. He does pop it. So, I would say that that was a decent hold from Bishop. I think he did the best he can with that, but he is down five workers now. Kronos did delay their nexus quite a bit, so I think the five worker gap will be caught up partially by Terran. Maybe Terran can get within, like, two. So I would say this is a somewhat evenish game. I am a little worried that Terran's built this many Marines though. He's now, I think, fully loaded up that bunker and Protoss is going straight Reaver. No Observer this time. He knows, oh, is, he, is that tank that low? Wow, it actually was that low, but not able to get the killing blow. Mighty bleeds off one additional goon. And now one of the goons is extremely weak Terran's going to try and make a move with just five marines, one tank, and this is actually going to be a strong attack. There's two tanks, actually. There's one trailing this, plus a vulture, but the reaver should be out pretty soon. But the problem for Protoss is he only has one gate. That nexus is still not done, by the way. It's just about to finish, so Terran's actually in a really good spot. He's got his natural up and running for a long time. Protoss, I don't think, can transfer workers here. Mines are being set up. Decent amount of tanks and marines pushing through. Where is the reaver? He needs it ASAP. Mm, is he gonna be able to bunker here? I think bunker could be a good, a good follow up. There's still no reaver. I think that's the reaver coming. There it is, shuttle. And this shuttle should shut this down. Does need to be killed. Oh, lands in the sweet spot. Bishop wasn't paying attention. Takes a full shot onto that tank. Reaver plus boom combo ends up taking down the tank. And this is going to be a loss of all of the tanks. Not going to get the Nexus. I would say even though the trade was clearly in favor of, of Protoss, I would say that that was... That was okay to lose all of his stuff because Terran denied the Nexus uh, mining for so long. He also killed, what, one or two goons? Uh, but he is in trouble in the sense that now he doesn't have any units, so a Reaver counterattack could be devastating. But overall, I think it was okay to make that trade. Even worker count now, 35 to 35. I, oh no, is his turrets, are his turrets late? Luckily for Terran, I don't think there's anything... Oh, there is a Zealot. Okay, there's just one tank. The turret needs to get up. It's not going to get up, man. And this Reaver may just end the game. Zealot, can he get the killing blow? I think he'll be able to actually escort this tank to safety. And the Reaver, I guess, took a little bit too much damage to feel confident about poking in. And will instead back off. Mighty also is going to build a third Nexus at mid-right. We see an armory going down at the natural, but for some reason, I actually think that's a second armory. I, I feel like I saw another armory in the main. <clears throat> I guess at some point we'll get a actual look at that. Oh man, that mine connected and gets three dragoons with that shot. That's painful. However, this reaver now, or this shuttle now has speed and now he's coming in for round two. And I think it's double reaver now. Yeah, double reaver, good spike. Hey, oh, he lost the reaver. How did that die? That tank that was going into siege mode somehow got off a shot. And that is a big, 
big pickoff for Bishop, what could have been devastating damage. Now all of a sudden is definitely manageable. One Reaver. That was that was cute micro right there to load up that SCD and save it. So good hold so far from Bishop. He is down 15 supply, I guess. He is down a third base. And that armory is spinning. Yeah, I don't think you can make that move. He is just going to back off. Now in Bishop's main, he does have three factories. Kind of like an in-between amount of factories. Hasn't really committed to a timing just yet. Yeah, it is double armory. I knew he had a second armory. Second armory in the main. So this is going to be a timing with 1-1. One, one, going into his fourth and fifth fact right now. Maybe go upwards of seven fact because of how many SCDs he already has. I think you can definitely afford seven fact on these 47 workers that he's got. So this is going to be a, a huge push, assuming that that is what he ends up going for. More gates going down for Mighty. Saw so he's up to five gate. And with the double add-on, Bishop's going to be able to pump out a ton of tanks. So Mighty really needs to figure out what this is. Because if he thinks that this is going to be an expansion, he may be in trouble. Now I saw double shuttle for Mighty. So again, it is going to be lots and lots of shuttles but you know you have to consider shuttles are 200 minerals they don't do damage um, these two, th those 200 minerals could be going into more gates could be going into you know zealots even and this could be a really tough push to stop i don't think bishop is going to move out just yet but the way he's moving his units makes me think that he may be making a move momentarily. There's the Unsiege. I'm surprised he's going to go. Leads the way with an SCV. Soaks up the Reaver shot. And gets up one shot onto the Reaver. That's good. Reaver's going to try and hold the line. And despite the big econ from Bishop, I don't see any additional factories. It's not going to be the seven fact. He is still just sitting on five fact. I'm going to assume that that means potentially thinking about top middle as a third base. Reavers, they're just trying to buy time. He has bought enough time that now he's up 40 supply. He's starting to ramp up his gateway count. I saw the Citadel was completed, so speed should be on the way. And now, here we go. This is like nine tanks, something along those lines. Five fact. Actually, I think a six fact in the main of of Bishop. I think that just went down, or maybe it's a starport. Either way, this push is moving across. However, 40 supply advantage for Protoss. This is going to be tough for Karen to make work. Oh, he's just going to go for a counter, and you can see speed, zealot had, or speed upgrade has already kicked in. So this time around, unlike the game versus Rush, he will at least have speed on his zealots. However, these shuttles both died, and the Reavers are in the main, and that means that the Reavers aren't with the army anymore. So Bishop, he has a strong push, but these Reavers are buying a, are, are stalling a lot of time. Oh, we actually have a big engagement now that Terran unseeds in the center of the map. We have Protoss just slamming into him, but it looks like we actually missed the engagement. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Zealots get on top of the army. So do the goons, and this tank count that was sitting at like eight or nine, eight or nine is now only at three. However, Protoss was up 40 supply. Now they're only up 20. So a big swing in supply in favor of Terran, but I think there's just too much production for Protoss at this point. Yeah, and it was a six factory for Terran. It was not a starport, so this is not going to be a transition. It is just going to be full committal here. Protoss ramping up even more gateways. There's a DP mixed in, and I do remember Bishop had just put down his Comsat. He may not actually have that much energy to scan for these DTs, so a DT could do dev devastating amounts of damage. Well, that one didn't. <laughs> that one just got immediately blown up. And he is going to try to slow push his way into the Protoss army. I think that this could work, but the problem that I'm seeing is that the tank count is so low. There's only three tanks, maybe five tanks now, with that reinforcement. But it is going to be hard for Protoss to engage into this position, because just like 
in the Mighty vs. Rush game, remember where he made that big engagement in between the choke point of the of the natural and third? It was just like a meat grinder for Protoss. So Protoss is going to unload into the main. I'm guessing that was probably two Zealots and a Reaver, but the Reaver didn't unload. Yeah, there's the Reaver. I just saw the fire uh, the scarab go out, and it does take down the turret. It does again buy time, but Damn, this is, a, this, how many vultures is this? Good lord, that is so many vultures. And here we go, the engagement. The zealots do not get good good connections right there. I was hoping that there was going to be a big mine explosion to take down some of the vultures, but that didn't happen. Reaver into the main again is going to unload, but he is going to lose the shuttle. And that means that this Reaver is stuck and it's going to die. And now supplies are very close, 112 to 130. Is he really going to do it? More goons getting taken down. The shuttle play is... Uh, really hasn't gotten the damage that he's looking for. Like, yes, he killed a lot of SCVs, but Bishop had a, a, a billion SCVs to begin with. So killing those additional SCVs doesn't, didn't really impact his macro. He is on the doorstep, man. He's now setting up mines. There's no observer here. He has no way to clear... Vis uh, clear clear the mines out like they're just going to oh he's going for it here we go this may actually be the last stand we were trying to get some connections the vultures are trying to hold the line now that was a good shot there Reaver finally gets a good connection kills off the scv and a couple of vultures but look how many tanks are still behind it now remember it was three tanks a moment ago now it's at seven vulture i mean zealous are trying to get their way get their way in here but there's nothing to support them the reaver didn't hit the same tank two separate shots Oh, he, he set it up so he could pop both tanks at the same time. But the vultures are in. This was a killer push from Bishop. I thought it was going to be held, but not the case. Now he's breaching the natural. I feel like Protoss needs more Dragoons. Yeah, there's the Dragoons at the bottom side, but he's not using them with the army. He's now going to try and come in through the backside with the shuttle, but the Re... Okay, Reaver gets a good shot off there. Zelt's do bleed out, though. Reaver gets shut down. Is this it? Did Bishop do it? He did! What a crazy strong push from Bishop right there. I didn't think that there was any chance that it could work, but he made it work. That positioning outside uh, of the choke point is just a nightmare for Protoss to deal with. I wonder if Mighty, instead of doing the Reaver Bomb in the main, if he had used that to try and just overrun the push if that would have uh, been enough but either way bishop he came to play today that was a really strong push and he actually makes it out in first place that means we have mighty sitting in the deciders match and surprisingly our losers match is going to be rush versus beast i don't think anybody's gonna have that on their bingo card here rush potentially going to be eliminated in round one so let's get into our losers match it is going to be a rematch of the semi-finals from season one rush versus beast first map is dark origin and we do have our can player in the top left position meanwhile in the bottom right we have beast and top left not a great position to wall so because of that i'm going to say that the chances of rush eight raxing is considerably lower than if he had spawned bottom right and because of that i'm hoping to see either 11 hatch or 12 hatch from beast but you never know with these guys they could be mind gaming oh i know that you know that this is not a great wall position so i'm still gonna eight rax <laughs> you always gotta factor in thoughts like that and there goes that SCV, SCV down to the low ground. And it is an 8 racks. <laughs> I can't believe it. So he is going to an 8 racks. You can do deep on the left side, deep on the right side over top of the racks. And that will be ling tight. But the problem with walls like this is how do you get your marines into the safe side? And unfortunately for Beast... This does look like it is going to be a 12 hatch from him. There's no pool. Whoa. 
Okay. I, I saw him go up to 300 minerals, and I'm like, wait a minute. Did I miss something here? Is this a nine hatch, nine pool? But it is just because the Overlord hadn't popped yet, and now he is going down to that low ground for the 12 hatch. And Overlord is about halfway across the map. I don't think an 8 racks can actually pick off the Overlord in the center of the map. I think you get over the uh, the dead space on the right before the Marine can kill it. I could be wrong though, but the SCV going out at somewhat normal timing. I don't think you can really read this from Zerga saying like, oh, that SCV is later than usual. I think everything here looks pretty standard. There's that wall that I was talking about. And Marines are on the move first one is already halfway across the map bunker coming down the overlord did not see anything just yet because smartly rush has gone a long way to avoid that overlord and beast may be thinking like yes i see you building a bunker but is this really actually an eight racks well the answer is yes and the marine's already here and the bunker's already complete oh no that drone is already almost dead also. So this bunker has already done a good amount of damage. Force six drones off of the line. There's a completed bunker here. Now, there's also bridges. This is a... Oh my gosh. Oh, the drones didn't drill. So he loses a drone. This bunker is now gonna have three Marines loaded up pretty soon. He wants these, these drones, man. He wants to kill them. And there's gonna be actually a lot of Marines. He's built four Marines, five Marines? This is so many Marines. Generally players, they build like three Marines and expand, but not the case, that's a second bunker. He wants this hatch. The drones are so far away also. They're not even intercepting the Marine because like I said, you don't expect there to be this many Marines. This is a dead hatch. Wow, this was, this completely blindsided beast and this may be over. I don't think he has the, the DPS to take down both of these bunkers. He may not even have the DPS to kill one of them. Look at the micro. Look at the micro! He ends up taking down one bunker, but he lost all of his links. He lost all of the drones. Yeah, he just taps out. You're not playing out of that. That's, that's game ending damage. And that was another quick one. A big mind game there. Eight Raxing at the worst spawn on Dark Origin. Saying, hey man. I don't care if Marines pop out on the wrong side. <laughs> I, we don't have to worry about getting to that point in the game because I'm just going to end it with just rallied five Marines across the map. <laughs> All right, well, that did not go as I was expecting. So let's get into game two already. Rush one game away from eliminating Beast. We're going into Apocalypse as our second map. In the bottom left. This is his last life, surprisingly. Just in the round of 32. It's B. And in the bottom right, one game away from making it into the deciders match, it is Rush. And if I was Beast there, I would be pretty upset with how the game went. Not just because I lost, but because of how it went down. Like, he didn't overpull drones. He didn't intercept any of the Marines being rallied across the map other than that one time on the bridge. Like, Terran literally just walked across the map without any real threat and just won the game with double bunker. Like, that's a tilting way to lose. That's a that's a dumb way to lose, right, uh, is, is probably what he's thinking. And this is going to be back-to-back -back eight... Oh, it's not back-to-back -back eight racks games. It is actually going to be a depot. It's a pretty late depot. It's like a almost 150 minerals. That's why I thought it was going to be an 8 racks, but not going to be. Just going to have a normal opener. Now, last season, uh, I, I don't remember Rush 8 racksing that often. So I guess this season, he, he may actually start putting on a lot of pressure. Now, this is, again, a very forward racks. This is an interesting wall that Terrans have been doing on Apocalypse. The way you do this wall, depot on the left, like you see, racks on the right, and then you put another depot on top of the depot and the rack so the marine can sit between both the depots and then there's only a gap 
on the left side. And we do have Beast again with another 12 hatch. He will not be dissuaded by the aggression in game one. He is going to continue to play with his macro opener. And this time around, not going to get punished. Terran is going to find Zerg with the first scout. And this is, again, the typical opener from Zerg these days. It's going to be the two-minute pool, two-minute gas. And Rush so far hasn't really shown anything unusual. This is going to be a command center follow-up. Unless he's trying to get tricky, where he builds a second Rax in his natural and goes to Rax Academy, which we have been seeing somewhat often. He is moving out with one Marine. You know, Terrans have been making moves like this, maybe not with one Marine, but with like three. And they've actually gotten some damage done. I don't know if I've ever seen one Marine, though. This feels risky. I think he wants to force that drone to not mine and then back off. And that's exactly what he did. So, you know, not really much damage. He forces the drone to lose, like, one pull of mining. And that is a second Rax. There is the gas coming down. And that means we're going to have an academy coming down pretty soon. Ooh, hidden lings at the natural. He built a couple there, hiding them off to the side. So Beast may be trying to flood the natural with lings. Can he kill this SCV? Uh, so far the SCV is not getting taken down. I, I, maybe he's not gonna, oh, he is building more lings. At the natural, he's built a couple more lings. I think he's hoping that Terran makes another move, like he did with the Marine. Like, hey, you don't see any more links. I hope you come poke with like three or four Marines so I can just kill them off. Now, a couple of links got built at the natural, and he will show those, but he's only showing four. So this is a sneaky move, trying to bait Terran to attack, but so far, Rush not falling for it. He is just playing normally. Since it is an academy build, you know, your entire push comes down to Marine Medic, the eight Marines couple medic time you don't want to bleed off a couple marines potentially lings end up taking down that scv and now Terran needs to figure oh he's doing it again he's transferring drones he's trying to act like he's powering but again he's not so he's going to try and ling flood and we saw this in season one and it was sneaky you know the first time around but the Terran's kind of got accustomed to how beast played and i'm not too sure if this is going to work out again if you remember rush was actually a victim of this on polypoid he scanned the natural saw that there were drones moved out and lost everything now the scan goes off and the question is what did he scan looks like we don't have vision of it and again he moves out into the lings and he's gonna get caught for a second time the entire army gets blown up and this was a disaster he loses every marine at least he has a fire bat. He does have stem complete. So the fire bat does deal a lot of damage. But the lings are in. And Rush, he did not learn his lesson from season one. He does manage to kill the majority of the lings. But losing eight marines right there, that is huge. Now he's on full on panic mode, just trying to get down turrets. And in situations like this, when you know you need the turrets, just you're just building them anywhere. So it's going to be unlikely that he got them into all the, you know, key positions, like the optimal positions that you're used to getting them into. So despite him holding and not being dead here, it could spiral out of control uh, once the mutas hit. There's the first few mutas, but it's only four, and the turret actually gets up in the nick of time. Five, S or five mutas trying to find the hole. More turrets being placed now, of course, Beast did commit a lot there, right? Like, he built a lot of lanes, so his eco is not great. But 18 drones, you know, it's okay. Like, really, what you want to have at this point in the game as Zerg is something like 23 to 25 drones, something along those lines. So his eco is hurting, but this is definitely manageable. Now, as I stated, 
As a Terran, you're just in full-on panic mode building turrets at anywhere. It looks like he skipped out on turrets at this particular position. One Muta ends up falling. Stim Marines are going to reinforce this position and save the day. He does manage to take down three SCVs in that engagement, so that was a good trade. Ten units now. I... yeah, I don't think you can go in there. Now, the follow-up for, for Terran, what is it going to be? There's only two racks. I think the only thing you can do is start scaling into tech. So I'm hoping that the factory comes down pretty soon. And in fact, that was the factory right there. Turrets, just three. Those are all going to die. Clutch repair. Clutch repair, really? Clutch repair, it's still alive. That was really, really fantastic from Rush there. Ends up managing to hold one of the turrets and takes down two mutilists during that trade. Another turret gets focused down immediately. If he can get rid of the academy, that'd be great. That means there would be no more, uh, no more medics being able to be produced. Ooh, he couldn't do anything about it, so that academy falls. That's great. That means that every medic that falls is very impactful. Depot falls. This is starting to spiral out of control. Rush is about to be supply blocked, and he is now supply blocked. So many SCVs dying. Overlord's gonna die. But it doesn't supply block piece, so that's not going to be that impactful right there. Wow, this is just not the position you want to be in as Terran. He's now almost even in worker count. He has no control over the bottom side of those mineral patches. He's trying to go into Starport. He's trying to get a Valkyrie out. But it is so slow. By the time it comes out, there may be something like 24 Mutalists by then or something crazy. Now, there are a million turrets at the natural. I don't really see any way of busting this position, but maybe he can use the high ground to his advantage, go in and out of vision, snipe some turrets. It's going to be really hard for Terran to reinforce those positions with those Marines. And he is actually going to come in here. Okay, actually, those... That died real quick. Those are going to snipe that turret right there. Those SCVs are going to get sniped. Or some of them are. Actually, Rush realizes like he can't just sit in his main anymore. He needs to make a move out into the map to alleviate some of the pressure. He snipes the add-on. That means Valkyrie cannot be produced at all. Okay. I mean, look at this. There's more Mutalists than there are Marines. This was a complete disaster game for Rush. He just has no army. Beast is now starting to... He's going into Hive! <laughs> He's going into Guardian Hydra. I thought he was all in with just Mulus, but he actually has a follow-up. So he's saying, I don't care if you've got Valkyries, man. I'm going to have Guardians, Devours, Hydras, and Guardians start, I think, with two armor. So these Valkyries are going to do almost no damage. That begs the question also, if he was planning on going Guardian Hydra, did he actually get armor on his Mutalus? Or did he get weapon? Or what, what was the actual upgrade? Well, the actual upgrade was weapon for his Mutalus. So it must have been a, just a in the moment realization that he's not going to win with pure Mutas. And Terran... Well, this is not looking good. He's now starting to rebuild his worker count, I guess. Now up to 31, he has his first Valkyrie out on the map. This army is decently large. I could see, actually, Zerg losing. There's not a lot of support. In fact, there's no support for... Oh my gosh, that was a really quick shot. And... Those, there's a lack of vision on those hydras. I think those was a, that was a lurker morph up at top, at top middle. Actually, it was lurkers. Okay, it's not, it's not going to be guardian hydra. It is just going to be defilers as a follow up. Lurker set up on position. I'm not sure if he actually saw that. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. The entire army. No, he's not showing it just yet. Okay, now he shows it. <laughs> so he's saying you are not going to reinforce this and the filer should be coming out pretty soon so just like in season one he's going to try and end the game with lurker defiler mutilus ling i guess beast is just not a guardian guardian hydra player 
There you go, Lurker moves in, but he got mowed down. That was a bit strange right there. Looks like Freezer having an issue with his screen. Oh, the, well, the Mewless all got absolutely crushed. But the Lurkers actually get into position at the natural. And GG scans go out, and there it is. GG comes out from Rush. That means we've got a tied series on our hands, boys. We got one to one. These games are really back and forth you really don't know who's going to win uh it looked like obviously beast was in a dominating position after the marine catch but after rush got all those turrets up i thought well maybe he's actually going to hold but then after the devastating amount of damage at the mineral line i'm like okay this game's done but he had a surprisingly strong move out but just a little bit too much Zerg at that point. So right now Cruiser is taking a break for a moment. So we'll be waiting for him and then once he is back, we'll be getting into game through into game three. So this is uh again another interesting situation. One of these players from our semi-finals last season are going to be eliminated just immediately. If it's Rush that makes it out. We get a Terran versus Terran of, oh, not a Terran versus Terran. We get a Terran versus Protoss, a rematch from our first game of Rush versus Mighty. And actually, you know, Mighty won that game, right? So he's gonna be feeling good about his chances there. If Beast makes it out, we're gonna have Zerg versus Protoss where we've got a incredibly strong, incredibly aggressive Zerg player facing off versus Mighty who has not played versus a Zerg just yet in this group so oh and also beast hasn't had to show any of his zvp style just yet so it's going to be completely in the dark trying to figure out what beast has got planned from protoss's point of view and it looks like cruiser is back so let's get into our next series, or not next series, our final game of this series, tied one to one, Beast versus Rush on Retro. Okay, in the top right, it is Beast, and once again, in the bottom right, our Terran, it is Rush. And I want to see the eight racks again, man. I think we've got a good, I think he's gotten a good spawn for the eight racks. It's not a full wall, but it's it's a decent semi wall. I want to see the eight racks. Like I was saying in season one, I don't think he eight racks that often. And it was so successful in game one. Why not bring it out again? At worst, this guy's going to pull first and you can just back off and be in an okay position. You know, not exactly the greatest position, but a manageable position. And there goes that SCV. But I think this is a depot timing SCV. Could be wrong though. There is the depot. And it means that it is not going to be obviously an 8 rack. So a little bit sad about that. And Beast, again, going for that 12 hatch. You assume it's going to be the 12 hatch, unless it's going to be something weird like 12 pool. I don't really expect. I, I can't believe that the Ling Flood again caught Rush off guard. We heard one scan go off, didn't actually see where he scanned, but I imagine he must have scanned the natural again. And so far, uh, I guess Beast and Rush, or a Beast for whatever reason, is able to mind game Rush in particular. I think it was Light in Season 1 that we saw in the 3rd and 4th place match where Light just knew, like, hey, this guy does this move often. He scanned both the main and natural, and then just sat there when he saw it. Like, he was just not caught off guard. So, definitely Rush needs to start double scanning, because clearly versus someone like Beast, he's willing to pull out this move, and he's willing to pull it out a lot of the time. So, again, another two-minute pool. Two-minute gas. Everything looks identical to what we saw last game. And 
and the SCV. We've got a double scout going on. This is a pretty just common move, especially versus someone as tricky as Beast. You definitely need to know whether Lings are coming or not. And now he will see that it is just the usual 12 hatch. And in Beast Main, there's a... Well, I actually thought Lings were being built, but I didn't realize that the pool was not done yet. So just continuing to build drones. Meanwhile, Command Center coming down for Rush. He's actually got two Marines out in the map. That, that's not a, that's not one SCV and one Marine. Those are two Marines out there. And he looks like he's trying to intercept an Overlord, but there's no in Overlord to be intercepted. And I don't know what you're trying to actually get done with this because two Lings beat two Marines. But he's trying to disrupt this binding again. It was an interesting path that he took. He avoided the Overlord, but there are the Lings. So the Lings are going to push this back. Well, maybe not. I guess with the SCV to support, maybe these Marines can actually win. Okay, they did win, by the way, but he loses two Marines. And I would say that that was in favor of Terran. Yes, you forced out one additional round of Lings from Beast, but, you know, building four Lings compared to two, I don't really think that's a big deal. But losing two Marines... Well, you know, that's, that's a decent a decent amount to lose because if you're going to go for a two racks timing, all of a sudden, instead of having eight Marines, you're going to have six. And if you're going to wait for two more Marines instead of pushing, you know, that's an additional 15 seconds or so. Like, that's, that's considerable. But either way, it is going to be a plus one timing this time for Rush. And he's got a somewhat quick academy as a follow-up. So it's going to be one more, one racks really fast upgrades. He's going to try and hit all those upgrades before the Munas get uh, towards his base. And this is a really strong play versus someone that plays low eco Mutilus. But it's not as low eco as we thought because Beast is going to be taking a third base. It is at top middle. And this is kind of a hard base to scout because you're expecting Zerg players to either take another main or take the low ground natural there. But instead, it is going to be a high ground third base with double entrance. You know, it's not exactly the most ideal place for a Zerg to take, but if it gets unscouted, it can be pretty tricky to play against. You may be thinking that Zerg's all in, but they actually have Queen's Nest or Hydra Den hidden over there. And we do have Rush following up with three racks. I think this is pretty standard as a follow-up. But you can see his marine count extremely low right now. He's going to need to build a bunch of turrets to help defend. Actually, it's a four racks. So Rush is really going to try and ramp up his production here. And funny enough, you know, I was talking about how he needs to double scan. But he, again, only has one scanner. And this time he scans the main. He's like, you know what, dude? <laughs> I need to see how many drones you have in your main. I'm just going to assume that there's a decent amount of drones at the natural. How many do you have actually there? And he sees that this time around, there is a lot in the main. He didn't move out, so it didn't really matter. But kind of hilarious that no longer is he scanning the natural. And yeah, Mutas, they are here. That Marine is running for his life. Gets into the bunker. And turrets are already set up. So Rush looks pretty solidified right now. This natural can't be broken. Doesn't look like this ramp can be broken either. Just be trying to be a little bit annoying, but actually if, if this is all you're doing as Zerg, just harassing my racks or ha harassing a depot, as a Terran player, I feel like I'm doing really well. So Muta's gonna swoop in here, try and rack up some turret and SD kills. We'll get one turret. An SCD also, but oh, he actually surprisingly lost a Mutilus and he lost a Rally Muta, so he's lost two Mutas. This is four racks, so Terran is out on the map with a lot of pressure. Scan up the natural seas, there's no Sunkins. Also, saw the drone count, so he knows that he's worth big. Oh, another Mutilus falls. There's another one that's quite low on. Oh my gosh, this is not the engagement that, Ter that Zerg is looking for. The Marine count is pretty damn big. What is it, eight with two medics? And with four racks production, this group of units can turn into two groups of units really quickly. 
Terran may actually be able to just go for a killing blow pretty soon unless Zerg can scramble and get some more mutas and lings out. At the third base, I noticed that there's no high, no additional... Okay, I think actually a, a building just went down right now. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it's probably a Hydra Den. I don't think he could rush Queen's Nest this quickly. Okay, it's a hydrogen there. What's at the... I guess at the at that base, it must be a queen's nest. Okay, so it is going to be a fast hive as a follow-up. And it gets scanned. So he knows what the follow-up is going to be. So everything looks like what it was last game, which is rush into hive, get lurkers. But it's a little bit of a different scenario this time because instead of Zerg having map control, Terran's army is quite fierce. And you've really got to know where these marines are because a lot of Terran players, they do like split off like four marines and he splits off four marines and they somehow get the top middle that would be insane damage now that was a really good trade there picks off one of the medics he killed a lot of marines actually that was the type of trade that beast really needed to get back in this game and actually that's a lot of stuff he may be able to just jump on it immediately he's looking for it he's like dude oh he does jump on it and this army is going to get crushed Karen, he he needs stuff. That, there's nothing in the bunker. But Zerg's not going to commit, not going to overstay. I actually think he could have won the game there. I, oh, he's going to go now. He's going to go now. There's a lot of links. No, he's not willing to commit. I don't think that's a full bunker. More Marines going to bleed off. If he runs into the main, look at this. There's two turrets, three Marines. That's it. Yeah, there's one Marine in the bunker. Oh. If Beast loses this game, he's going to be kicking himself for not making this move. There is absolutely nothing to defend. Or there was absolutely nothing. Now there's six Marines, two Medics, two Turrets. A little different now. But that was his moment of opportunity to potentially win the game. Now Terran, I see their Starport is blinking. I'm guessing it's for... It's actually for, for Valkyries. I can't believe he scanned Hive and thought that it was going to be... Guardian Hydra or something? There's no vessels. It's, it's Defiler again. You knew it was going to be Defiler because every single game that's gotten to this point has been Defiler. So, if Beast can get some Lurkers up... Well, we've got to move out right now. Oh my gosh, he catches the Lurkers while they're morphing. I think these just started morphing, by the way. Look how many there are. But it's complete. He burrows. Ends up losing two lurkers immediately, but he is getting contained by these lurkers. These two Valkyries are dishing out so much damage to all these mutas. Well, not all of them are gonna die, but like five of them die. Another engagement onto the Valkyrie is gonna try and run away. And Rush knows that he can't stop his army, so he's trying to just swoop around to the left side and try and do some interception, but Beast is not allowing him time to do that. He's just continuing, continually trying to push through here and set up a contain. Scan goes down, those lurkers. One of them dies. This army at the left side did not get scouted, by the way. So it is across the map, undetected. If he can kill the first defiler. Hey, oh, actually, now, now it's been spotted. It's been spotted. Kills an overlord. I uh, kills two overlords. Okay, that's massive. And now I think actually the defiler is on the way right now at the mid right. But I I think it's stuck. I don't think he can actually get synced up with the rest of the army. So this was a good move from from Rush. Maybe not. It's actually it's actually two hydros. It was not a defiler. And this army is doing a really good job by time. There's a defiler in the center of the map. It is getting escorted across, though. He can't let that squiggly boy get there. Terran knows that this is desperation. Or he must keep this defiler at bay because he still has no vessel. No mines. He has one tank. That's definitely not enough. However, Terran has gotten to the third base. It is completely exposed. So this base is going to die. base but what about the attack at the front of Terran's base what's going on there it seems like Zerg has not been able to breach 
that position. I just saw a big chunk of green actually die there. Oh, the entire orange blob down at bottom middle died. Looks like there's, what is this, four tanks? That's a decent amount of tanks. He may be able to pop a, maybe a couple lurkers before the dark swarm gets down. Yeah, he got two of them. He just taps out. GG. The lurkers could not get into position in time. And that means that, unfortunately, Beast will be eliminated. But that was, again, a close series. Rush was on the brink of losing. I do think if Beast committed there with the Mutas and Lings, he had a shot of winning the game because there was nothing in the bunker. There's one Marine, man. Uh, but that means that our Terran favorite is not eliminated yet. He will be going up against Mighty in the rematch, in the deciders match. So let's get into that series. Our first map, what is it going to be? It is going to be Dark Origin. Okay, in the top left, our Terran it is Rush. In the bottom right, looking through. It is mighty, and he's already up to no good man. This could be a 7 7 right in Terran's face. I find 7 7 to be so hard to deal with. The Zealot production ramp so quickly. Could, I, I, it could also be. Eight in the main. Dark Gordian, despite it being a two player map, I think I've only faced Cox Gates in my main like once. But for whatever reason, product players haven't done that to me. It's not going to be eight in the main. It is going to be. It's not going to be the seven gate either. So it's going to be a nine gate. Big time pressure here. But, hand players have a lot of experience versus stuff like that, especially now with both Dark Origin and Blitz in the map pool. And of course, Eclipse in the previous map pool gave Heron a lot of experience versus pressure like this. Barracks going down in the main of Terran. And now, what Terran needs to do is scout and see whether this is going, whether this is a proxy gate or whether this is you know just a gas steal into like nexus first or something but rush is not scouting just yet versus an early gate like this you really do want to get your two barracks down asap but he's not scouting surprised and this could get a little tricky to defend with just one barracks so zealot is on the way that probe died. I cannot believe that that probe died. And a probe doesn't, uh, you don't think of a probe being that strong, but when you're trying to micro versus a probe and the zealot and you're having to deal with a stolen gas, which can make mess up the AI of the Marines also, uh, keeping that probe alive is a big deal. And despite seeing the proxy gate, Rush has decided that he does not need a second Rax. First Marine is out. Zelda is going to try and come in here and get some damage done. But I don't really see this doing much damage. Like I said, without the probe, it's much easier to deal with. And he just goes in between the racks. The Zealot hasn't even gotten a single shot off on the Marine. Only, only you know, gave a love tap to that SCV. And right now, as Terran, you're probably feeling pretty good about this situation. So, that secondary pathway. Looks like the crews are having some issues with his keyboard. That zealot ends up dying. This zealot, I think, was already pretty low. This is not the damage that Mighty was looking for. He killed one Marine so far. I'm not even sure if he killed a single SCV. He's gonna try and engage. Now that Zealot that was getting focused down was actually the full health Zealot, so a little bit of a mistake there from Rush. Another big Zealot engagement here. So the issue 
So just as an FYI to you guys watching, the reason that the screen is scrolling so much is I think Cruiser has a stuck key on his keyboard, and that key is the up and down arrow. So it's uh, a little off. But he's doing the best he can there. And in the main, the Protoss actually has Cybernetics follow up, but he does not have enough Zealots here, I think, to hold. Oh, actually, look at that timing of the goon. It actually pops out in the nick of time. He may actually be able to hold. No, he's not going to hold the gate. The Zealots were too weak. I think the Zealots just didn't do enough damage. Or, I guess you don't technically need to do damage with the Zealots, but they got weakened so much that if you're not going to do damage, they at least need to have full health, and now this gate's going to get taken down. But in Mighty's main, he has a gate, so he's going to be fine versus just a straight marine counterattack. And Rush is going to take advantage of this by putting down a command center ASAP. Mighty's Nexus is pretty much in line with Terran's command center. So I think we're not going to see anybody gap up in workers, uh, you know, by any considerable amount. We're probably just going to hover around like a one to two worker differential for the next few minutes. But there's no way around this. Protoss is behind. You never want to be behind workers against Terran. Terran already has their factory. Terran, uh, Protoss does not have, uh, I think, any of their tech built up. And in fact, that 200 gas that you just saw get spent by Protoss, that's, I'm thinking, the Robo. So Mighty's been floating a lot of gas and just now able to spend it because he didn't have the money to be able to afford it. Range also just now starting for him. So can't even really pressure the bunker when the tank is already out. That is no bueno for our Protoss. And actually, is, is Terran really going to make a move with this? Five Marines, one tank? I guess he's feeling like he can do something. At minimum, force additional units. And in response, I think a second gateway has come, and down, has come down for Protoss. In Terran's main, because Terran didn't really get the scout, he did rush an eBay just to play safe because he know this could have been like a one base reaver. It could also have been DT drop. It could be straight DT. And as crazy as one base reaver sounds, I have seen it before. <laughs> it is definitely something that can happen. Vulture gonna run in here, but with lack of range, he still gets the Vulture, okay. Does confirm the Nexus. Doesn't see anything other than that. In Mighty's main, I see a, a pylon positioned at the top, top right of his base. And that does look like a Stargate type of pylon. Because you generally don't need a pylon in that position on this map because your Nexus at your third base will scout for the potential drops incoming. So I do expect to see Stargates in this game. But for now, there are none. In Russia's main, he has gone for his armory. So I think for how the game has unfolded, the timing is fine. But, you know, it wasn't, you know, some absurd timing like he did in the first game, which was, what, that 445 armory, something along those lines. I think this was a two-fact as an opener for Rush. He still doesn't have his nat gas, so he's really focusing on his mineral income. Yep, two-fact for him. And he's got a lot of workers, and his army is actually quite strong also. He's got three tanks, a couple of marines, a couple of vultures. And if he was to go right now, this... I, I'm not sure if Protoss can stop this. <laughs> Speed is good. Yeah, he's gonna go for it. These goons are completely isolated. They are cut off from the rest of the side of the uh, rest of the map. This third base, I think, should be denied at minimum. I don't think Protoss rushed support bay, so Reaver shouldn't be out anytime soon. Zealot is going to not trigger the mines, and the Nexus got immediately canceled. So that is a big win for Terran. Mighty. Spent 400 minerals on that Nexus, and now he had to cancel. Is he okay, he lost a lot of damn, lost a lot of health on that shuttle. But Mighty is not going to be uh, denied this third base. Instead of building more gateways, he's saying like, ah, okay, you caught me. I was a little bit too greedy, but now, now that I have units, I'm going to go build it again. He's going to rebuild that third Nexus. 
in Terran's main. I think he's gone up to five factories, actually. Yeah, lots of production there. And just like Bishop, double add-on. So this is going to be huge tank count. And Rush is someone that does do seven-fact timings. I think after he scans and probably sees that, again, Protoss is trying to fast, take a fast third base, he may actually go into seven-fact, like I was expecting Bishop to do. The gateway count is pitiful. It's at four right now. There's the academy in the main of Rush, and you can see the mine set up throughout in the main, making sure that drops don't do any damage. Goons are just going to try and hold the line outside of the base. Meanwhile, a couple of vultures have gotten out, trying to be sneaky, trying to catch a few probes during a transfer. But no probes have transferred just yet. Vultures do confirm the third base. And Shuttle, he's looking for an opening. There really just isn't. But he technically does find an opening right there. Will kill an SCV and deny a turret. But other than that, not much damage. But the, I'm really just waiting to see what Rush is going to do with all this money. He's got 50, well, he had 57 workers. He's got 55 workers. There's no command center. There's no starport. He's only on 5 fact, can definitely afford more. And, oh, I heard a couple of probes go down at the third base. Snuck in there. Got a couple of probes. And Terran is just consolidating their army. It looks like Terran is now finally going to scan and see what's going on and if he scans right now he would be able to see that Protoss doesn't have that many gateways another vulture run by into the third base got a couple of pros we got the shuttle moving out Karen's army is pretty huge almost even supply versus Protoss this is going to be really hard Protoss to stop again. The Reavers are trying to buy time. That was nice. Take down the tank. Almost loses the shuttle though. Those are very far forward Goliaths and tanks. I don't know if this was worth for, for Terran. He does get one of the Reavers. A second one also dies. But Terran did lose a lot for that. Lost a decent amount of tanks. Of course, Protoss losing both Reavers is huge. But that was, I think, about as well as it could have gone for Protoss right there. By the way, at the bottom side of Terran's base, I see a big building. I'm going to assume that's a command center. So this is not going to be all in from Rush. Yeah, command center basically done. And there's the seven fact that I was expecting to see, but still no starport. This is going to be, again, another 1-1 one, one upgrade timing from Terran. Scale into their 2-2 two, two at a later stage. But I am getting worried for Protoss in the sense that Protoss is not exploding on the map like he did in the retro game. You know, he still doesn't have his fourth base. Terran's now going to take their third base at a decent time. The tank count, even though he lost a decent amount versus a Reaver, it's still pretty big. There's no way you're attacking across the bridges into this. So Terran's going to get their third base without being punished. Dark Origin is a map that you can pretty easily get a fourth base. And if it's going to be four base Terran versus four base Protoss, Terran's loving that scenario. So I think Protoss needs to start considering some type of mm, late game move like start scaling into arbiters or start scaling into carriers because i don't think gateway man with storm is going to cut it on this map i really do think you need to have some higher tier tech but we'll see for now i think both sides are just going to solidify their position you see mighty taking his fourth base Terran just setting up more mines, setting up a better sim city to prevent any type of bust. Goons, all they can really do is move to the left side and clear out the mines to make sure that Terran doesn't get greedy and try and take an instant fourth base. So I think for now we're just gonna kind of stagnate, wait for players to start maxing out. Fourth base is basically done for Protoss at this point. Transfer is going down and Terran's Kind of just sitting pretty with around 60 workers. I saw Starport was done. Science is really should be done. And should be scaling into his upgrades. Now that's something that you don't ever want to see as a Protoss fan. It's 8 gate versus 7 factories. 
there's just not enough production for Protoss. He needs to win a trade and he needs to win it overwhelmingly because Terran's going to be able to rebuild their supply very quickly. There's the Templar, so it is going to be Storm as the main type of area of effect damage. That is so many tanks and so many vultures. Almost no Goliaths, but don't need Goliaths at this point. Triple add-on for Terran. It's a lot of tank production capability. And right now, we're just waiting for Rush to feel confident in his position. And I guess now's the time. 1-1 one, one has kicked in. He's got a... Oh, he's, it's not the time. He's going to build a command center and set up for taking his fourth base. Meanwhile, Mighty is taking bottom left. So he's going to try and deny that base from Karen. I think that's a smart move. Also needs to take top right. And these goons will be pushed back. Always a feel bad situation for Paros when they can't attack anywhere and they can't really take, you know, three quarters of the map like on a four player map. And Karen's just slowly just building up that massive tank count. <laughs> I think he's at like 15 or 16 tanks or something right now. I mean, it, it's pretty absurd. The vessel's out also, so he's gonna have EMP. We've been seeing the 1 1 upgrade complete for a while, so you gotta imagine that 2 2 should be coming pretty soon. That is. A lot of zealots but if a single EMP goes off we're talking thousands of points of damage in just in, a, in, in an instant so Protoss needs to be very careful with how they group up these zealots also needs to be careful about running into mines tanks are gonna start moving out slowly but surely that Templar does actually manage to get off the storm before being taken out but Karen is at max, and this is going to be really hard for Protoss and Kiri. Protoss has a lot of stuff. Oh, he's just going to go. The mines were not set up. I guess he's feeling like now's as good time as ever. D-Matrix goes down. Good storm right there. It's a couple of tanks. Zealots at the left side getting on top of some of the tanks. The vultures in the back are not able to get through the bridges. So the Zealots actually had a good angle on top of the tanks. But despite that, there's just so many tanks in the back line. They're, they're, that the Zealots were no were not able to actually really get much damage done. And you can see both both sides lost about 50 supply. The problem for Protoss now, though, is Protoss used all of their Templar energy, and you've still got so many tanks and vultures to deal with. Rush slowly creeping through the center, side, the center of the map. I guess he feels like if he secures the center, he can easily get his fourth base and also start contesting either the bottom left base or the mid right base. I don't think I've really ever seen somebody do this, but it is an interesting way to cut the map and secure your fourth. The goons, there are technically three in between the third and fourth base, but I'm sure those are gonna get murdered pretty quickly. And thankfully this game, Protoss is scaling into the high tier tech. There are arbiters on the menu this time around. SCV transfer gets intercepted by those three goons, and those are gonna get taken out pretty, pretty damn fast. Two two should be pretty close to done if it's not done. Yeah, two two is done, and I think at this point you got to You need to make an attack as Protoss because you at least know there's a handful of goons, not or a handful of vultures, not with his army. But he doesn't actually feel confident to make that move. Instead, he is going to wait a little bit. Now he's moving in. I'm not sure if the Vulcans on the left side actually got in with his army, but Templar unloads, good storm right there. Zealots do get on top of a decent amount of tanks at the top side, but you can see that this 2-2 army in the split of Rush across the center of the map, it's just too strong. Zealots at the bottom side are gonna try and come through, but I think there are mines set up. No, actually no mines right there, but good usage of the Vultures to go towards the bottom side. And actually, the Zealots did more damage than I thought. They actually whittled down the tank count, what is it, to seven? But Rush doesn't care, he's on the move. Double Storm does a decent amount of damage. Okay, it's not seven tanks, it's 11 tanks. An absurd amount of tanks, and now he's sitting on the bridges. 
he can start sieging up to the fourth base. You can see that actually Mighty's already evacuated that base. There's no probes there. He sent them all to top right because he knew that that base cannot be saved. That was good intuition or good game sense to do that instantly. But this is a killer contain. Now Rush can kill any of the bases that he wants, whether he wants bottom left, mid right, the third base, or top right. Those are all easily uh, capable of being taken down. But remember, there are Arbiters or Mighty, so you do have to worry about recall. Rush needs to start spamming turrets, mines in his main, you know, mines at his fourth base. Get a Vulture run by into the fourth, or into the top right, I mean. Boom's gonna try and save the day. And looks like the goon may actually save it for now, but tanks are on route. This base is gonna get taken down. A little bit forward with that tank, it gets blasted. I think those are arbiters. So maybe shuttles outside of the bridges right now. Oh, we have a massive engagement outside of the bridges. Trying to desperately get out is mighty. Good unload. It looks like the majority of the Zealots actually managed to get out, but you just can't get past the bridges, man. Look how many tanks there are. This stuff is getting blown up just as they get past the bridge. Supplies have plummeted for mighty. It was, what was it, close to even a moment ago? Now a 40 supply lead for Rush. That was a huge swing in supply. Now recall, obviously not a threat anymore because he doesn't have any units. Is that really the first Arbiter? I felt like he should have had one a little bit quicker than that, but maybe that is actually the first Arbiter and that's why he was so desperate to just try and make it out. Uh, shuttle bomb onto the fourth base. That's a good storm, but in the end doesn't do much damage. And I think game one is going to be heading Rush's way any moment now. Mighty, he is trying to hang on because he has the double corner bases, but top right's falling. Bottom left is gonna fall as soon as Terran just moves any type of army over there. The fourth base got killed. There's still no way across these bridges in the center of the map. You can see, again, Mighty making a move over there, but again, it's already gotten blown up. Yep. I think this counter the game. Oh, well, I, I guess... I guess Rush doesn't know that he's up 70 supply, so he does want to be just careful. There's no way that this army can be, can be stopped. Even with good storm, with just too many tanks, there's only a handful of units left over, and there it is. GG comes out, and that means Rush. He will strike first in this series. So well done from Rush. I think everything just kind of snowballed with the zealot pressure where it didn't do any damage he lost his gate uh, because he didn't do any damage taking the third base was a little risky it got cancelled and at that point what do you really do as protoss you're just at a deficit so hopefully mighty can get it together in game two maybe just not proxy versus rush maybe try and go for a 12 nexus again we'll see though this is his last life he must win here otherwise he will be eliminated and in the top we do have the one and only rush and at the bottom left we've got mighty so we saw this exact spawn scenario in the bishop versus mighty game top middle versus bottom left we had nexus first there also wonder if mighty will try and do the 12 nexus again because of how well it went versus bishop but you know rush I don't think he's going to make that two-fact timing attack versus a Nexus Forge opener. I think you're going to have to play a more tech-based game versus him. I don't think three gate is the move if he ends up going, uh, as it is the follow-up if you end up playing for the same opener. There's the pylon. Right now we're just waiting for builds to unfold. I hope we can get to see a gasless play from Rush, just because we've been seeing gas openers from Terran like almost every single game. I'm trying to think back to season one, how many gasless games were there really? Like, I think there was only like one. 
I, I can't really, there's not really any game that comes to mind that stands out, or series that comes to mind where I saw multiple gasless games. But there is the forward Rex. I guess it could be gasless. Meanwhile, Mighty, he's hearing, he's hearing me, man. He, he's listening in on the cast. He's saying, you know what, Niokin's right. I'm going to 12 Nexus again. And if he can get off that 12 Nexus without getting scouted, that would be great. Okay, and Rush is actually going to scout him last. So we do get this scenario where it is Gasless Expand versus Nexus first. And you know, Terran can't really pressure this anymore because you're not going to have the Vulture to support. There are two variations of the Gasless Expand also. There's the safe one where you build a depot and you build a couple of Marines. And then there's the unsafe one where you instantly build the Command Center. This particular scenario, you're really hoping Rush Builds the command center immediately, and as I say that, he did not. So Gasless is still going to be big econ for him, but it's not going to be as big as the obvious, uh, obviously as the 12 Nexus. Gas Steel, oh man, this is not great for Rush. Has to build a 17 Gas versus a 12 Nexus. Now he's going to see the bad news with his SCV. That this guy got away with absolute murder. It's a one gate also. <laughs> one gate cybernetics. This is the... Dr and he's just pulling for it. He's saying, you know what? This is unplayable for me. He's pulling the boys. SCV pull with Marines. If, if Mighty didn't see it, you know, maybe there's no Zealot. Maybe he can actually win the game with only one Rax. But this is going to be really hard to make work for Terran. Pronos can just sack their natural also and just play a normal game from here. Gets the probe. He is going to leapfrog another bunker into position. There's a lot of SCVs here. I don't think the Zealot can engage. Can't lose that Zealot, man. Zealot, it's already down to less than half health. Wow. Okay, it's getting to the point where he can start leapfrogging towards the gateway. Like, the Zealot is already basically dead. This is not a good situation at all for Mighty. If Rush builds a bunker here, I think Mighty's actually in trouble. Is he going to build a bunker, though? Maybe not. No, I guess he's not feeling confident enough to try and bunker the main. But he is going to kill this Nexus. I can't believe he actually killed the Nexus. So now, all of a sudden, Rush is definitely not in a bad position. He's going to have his own command center. Kronos, yes, they have a faster tech, but Rush also started mining gas also. So his factory is going to be decently timed. That cell is dead, by the way. A pro pull, man. Not like this. Is he really trying to save the Nexus? This can't be saved. Dude, there's a bunker behind this. You cannot save this base. He's trying to save the Nexus so he can continue to build probes, but that's just not happening. Rush can kill this Nexus whenever he wants. This was a huge blunder from Mighty there. There was no world where he could save this Nexus, but he tried and he ends up, first off, losing a lot of mining time. And then he also lost, what, like five probes or something? Now he finds himself down four workers. He has no Nexus. Command Center is almost done. Terran's factories are almost done. He can't run by the bunker because this bunker, first off, is fully loaded up and there's a second bunker and there's SCVs blocking the way. So this is a nightmare for Mighty. I actually think the only way he can come back in this game is if he goes for some type of mega all-in. So something like a DT drop and just pray that you somehow avoid the mines or this guy missed a turret or doesn't have comsat. Range kicks in. He's gonna start knocking down these bunkers and try and I, I'm gonna assume he's gonna try and build a Nexus, but the probe count is still just hanging around 23. Okay, there's another probe. So he is actually gonna try and play this out, try and build a Nexus. He's not going to all in like Goon Reaver, Bulldog play, and just, you know, hope that it works. But he is at a massive disadvantage at this point. There's a real case for Rush being up 10 workers at some point in this game. He's already up six. Nexus just now started. 
Mighty, he has to just, he has to go for something risky here. He can't play a normal game. You're not going to be able to beat a player of Russian caliber playing a normal game. So what is that risky play going to be? Is he going to be trying to take a third base immediately? Is he going to try and, like, rush carriers? Is he going to try and do a bust? I don't see any additional tech buildings in his main going down, so I don't think it's going to be some type of DT drop or crazy shenanigans like that, which only leaves us with it's either going to be like Rush Stargates or third base. Oh my gosh, he even goes Observer. This is not looking good. Goons are just going to retreat back. The Siege pushes them back. They can't do any damage at all anymore. They can't even force repair on the bunker. Meanwhile, Terran has double add-on. So he's going to be putting on pressure pretty soon. Maybe go with five tanks. I guess he could just sit in his main also. But because of all the damage he did, I was actually expecting to see like two more factories come down. Go double add-on, four fact timing. But not going to be the case because the armory is basically done at this point, so he's actually gonna be start gonna start scaling into his upgrades. Protoss is actually gonna try and get a third base, but this is just gonna be so hard to you know really get up and running. Like he may have it up and running for a little bit of time, but I imagine as soon as Terran even gets an, an inkling of you having a third base, he's just gonna go try and punish it. Third gate coming down Karen is going into 4-fact, and it did look like he's going to potentially go into 5-fact. So he may have either a, just a straight-up plus 1 timing, or again, another 1-1 one, one timing. Vultures are making their way across the map, laying some mines. And he does confirm the 3rd base, and now that he's confirmed the 3rd base, yeah, he's probably just going to flood factory. Vultures are going to try and get into the natural. Mines... Connect on the uh, on the dragoon at the back. Vulture gets into the natural, and he will maybe get two or three kills. It looks like he got three kills. That's pretty much max damage, and he got a fourth kill, and he killed a goon. So those vultures were definitely worth. And if that doesn't trigger an all-in from rush, I don't know what will. Yep, there's an additional factory. So this is a that's at least five, I think, a six fact at the top side of his base. So six fact timing from him, just like on retro. But this one. I don't think he's taking a third base. I think this is, you've overstepped, my boy. You have taken too many ba bases for my liking, and you are gonna get punished. This is gonna be so many tanks also. Absolutely so many. He is playing cautiously though. He's respecting the power of the Dragoon. Almost got a Goon there. Vultures again running by. They're going to the third base. Oh, goons are in position, so that got denied. I thought he was going to run into that, but he didn't. Now, if you're Protoss in this situation, what can you do? You obviously can't face the army head-on. I think the best thing he can do is shuttle bomb. I think he's got to have a shuttle bomb here. Try and wait for the Terran to lay some mines, and maybe drag the mines into the tanks. But it looks like we may not get to that point because the attack is already here. The mines have already been set up behind the Dragoons. Look at these Dragoons. They, all they can do is move command, just trying to run for their lives. And it looks like the shuttle was not loaded up because this was the moment of opportunity to try and sell it bomb on top of the tanks. He's now going to move in, but Terran cleared out all the mines. And he just GG's immediately because he knows that there's no way he could win. And that means that Rush... He is going to take the series 2-0. He is going to avoid elimination. A little bit sad for Mighty. You know, after beating Rush in game one, he's probably feeling really good about his chances of making it out. But in the end, Rush, way too good. And he will be making it out in second place. So well done to him. Of course, Bishop making it out in first place. That was a shocker. I can't believe that he actually made it out, especially with his, his timings. Like, two facts are not easy to make work, but he, he made them work, man. So props to him. And that means that we've got two Terrans into the round of 16 already. Um, I'm, I think we don't have any screens, other screens to show. So thank you guys so much for watching. This is the beginning 
of the StarCast TV Star League Season 2. If you enjoy the games and you want to support StarCast TV, definitely consider becoming a Patreon supporter or supporting on YouTube or making a direct donation to Cruiser. I know he's got his PayPal listed in the comments or in the description box on YouTube. Um, but that's it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in Group B.